I wanted to just echo as well the, the thanks to everybody who um, came together in, in making this happen and getting us all in the room. Um, just really kind of overwhelmed and, and um, humbled to be, in, be standing here and be in this room with all of you. So thank you for um, blending your talents and your time and your, your resources to, um, to be part of this together. And I, um, so I know I'm noted as the rural schools expert um, or something like that, um, whatever that means. And so kind of a lot of my work experience had been in um, very rural schools, rural West Virginia, Southern West Virginia, um, the school and the community. If you've seen the October Sky, uh, movie October Sky with the Rocket Boys um, taught in McDowell County where those, those boys were from. Um, and then spent several years in Northern West Virginia, um, still a very small, very rural community. And it um, felt like, um, felt like my mountain, since we were learning about mountains and second mountains, felt like my mountain was, um, was these, this small kind of rural um, change in, in um, working in rural schools. And so, of course, at the beginning of this school year, that found me called to an um, opportunity in a, a larger, less rural school, certainly not as urban as, as the school setting that we just heard about, um, and, and kind of been called it sub-rural, that it's, it's um, not quite urban, not quite rural, um, but the, the elements that we have seen at Highlands um, are the same kind of themes um, just in the, by the nature of the community there that um, I had observed in some of the rural communities in West Virginia, which would be kind of the isolation, um, the impact of poverty, and um, kind of um, being cut off from resources, which is really interesting at Highlands because we're uh, about a 25 minute drive from Pittsburgh, um, but, but feels as if we are, are miles and miles away from some of the resources and some of the connections um, that are offered to, to schools that are closer. And so that's, that's kind of my little introduction um, that I have been at Highlands um, just for this past school year. And though it's less rural than my past experiences, um, it's still applicable um, and would love to, to talk with anyone about the super rural experiences um, uh, you know, during our breaks over, over dinner or whatever you, um, you may have because um, just really cool experiences. But whenever I was reviewing the, um, the material for, um, for today and kind of reviewing the, the idea of, of a, a um, problem with character formation and, and how to address that, I knew that I had the perfect, um, or at least I think perfect, you guys can maybe let me know if I was off base, but what I thought was kind of a, a, um, a, a picture perfect case study in, in what we'd been doing this year um, kind of fell right in line with, um, with what I saw as kind of the vision for, um, for this afternoon. And so just a little bit of demographics about our school and our school district. Um, we were about 800 students, a little under 800 students. I think it's like 785 or something, something in that range. Um, you can see largely um, white student population, but there is, there is some diversity, especially with a, uh, a percentage of, um, of black or African-American students um, ethnically, as well as small proportions of, of other racial subgroups and, and mixed race students. Um, fairly significant special ed population in a um, pretty significant poverty or economically disadvantaged percentage um, in our district. And so um, what I want to start with is a photo, um, a photo that kind of became a, a big focus of my first semester um, at Highlands. And so this, um, this is a, a screenshot of, um, I don't know, I, I learned of the existence of this um, in December. Um, that apparently around the internet there is um, a, a federal, a, a racist hunting license um, that is, is um, predominant online, Some, someone who knows where developed it. Um, and and as you, the, the words that are, are um, blocked out, it is a federal N-word hunting license. Um, and it says, you know, um, license to, to hunt and kill um, anyone who is, quote, the N-word. Um, and so, this, um, this copy of this federal hunting license, um, one of our students decided to post, um, post this on Snapchat during school, post an image of it to the, of course, their entire social media network. Um, and within a few minutes of that, um, we had reports in the office that this had happened, that this had taken place. 
Um, and so this, um, I guess, my artifact, if you will, for kind of our, our challenge in character formation, um, along with several other um, kind of, of concerns with intolerance or, or um, lack of acceptance of diversity. Um, we also had a student um, as if one major December um, racially or ethnically insensitive incident wasn't enough, we actually had a student um, who designed um, uh, on a 3D CAD program in their tech ed class, they drew a 3D swastika, this was just before Christmas, um, and for the title of the project they wrote Happy Hanukkah, printed it out and turned it into their teacher as a project. So that's, that's pretty brazen um, that, that a student would, would say, hey this is not only am I okay with doing this, but I'm actually okay with turning it in for a submission to the teacher um, in the stack with the other assignments. Um, we also had a student, I think this was in January, um, and these are all separate students to kind of show you the, um, the pro proliferation of this lack of tolerance um, and, and lack of character in our, our school among our students. Um, we had a student say um, either towards or so that a, an African-American classmate could hear um, the, the quote about going, people should just go back to the plantation. Um, so that was, um, among with just kind of the, the N-word casually being thrown around in the hallways by students, both black and white actually, um, as, a, as just a culturally acceptable thing. Um, some students in the cafeteria feeling it's okay to, um, to mock or yell um, obscenities about other groups. Um, and, and both in the school and the community um, that, that this was okay, or that if it wasn't okay, that's just how it's always been, and that's how it will continue to be in this community because grandparents have passed that on to parents who have passed that on to their children. Um, and so this kind of became our character dilemma um, that kids thought that this was a joke. The kid who, who drew the swastika, when we kind of asked him, like, why did you turn this into your teacher? He said, well, I, did, I didn't think it was a big deal, like it was just a joke. I thought he'd laugh at it and throw it away and, and grade my actual su assignment submission. I was, well, did, do you understand why this is so serious? And he said, he said I, I, I mean, I get it, but it, I didn't know it was that serious. And, and he was being sincere, like in, in his perspective and his opinion. Um, and in several of the other similar instances we had, Kids, kids just did not have a grasp or an understanding that, um, that this, was, this was something that was a problem. Um, also, as far as kids attaching, we, we had, um, and, and I, they're diametrically opposed, but both problematic. We either had people, whenever this would come up about the, the problem of, of just kids not being tolerant of each other or not um, wanting to come together as community or not wanting to uh, express moral values, you either had um, people who wanted to point fingers at each other and said, well, sure, there's people in, in our community that are prejudiced towards each other, but it's their fault. They've been prejudiced to me, or they caused this, or they created this. And you can say, well, hold on, if, if, if you are just going to push all the responsibility onto the other party, how will we ever grow or change? And then on the other side, you had the parties that, of course, said, well, what are you gonna do? All right, it's just it's just what it is. Or uh, they're too it's, it, people are too sensitive these days. Like uh, boys boys will be boys, so to speak. And, and 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 these viewpoints were not coming just from students. They were coming from community members um, on on all sides of the spectrum. And and so that was was really a challenge. Um, that and it, a, a lack of willingness or ability to acknowledge that this was happening. Kind of kind of people just saying, hey, this is, um, this is fine, or it's not fine, but it's never gonna change. And I, you know, we had some town halls to get feedback from community members, and I would hear things like, well, I went here and graduated in 1990, and it was that way then. Or I, I remember growing up in the 1980s, and, and this community has just always been that way. It's, it's in our fabric, and you know, they would be very quick to qualify and say, I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying if you don't like it, you should probably leave because it's not going to change. That was, that was kind of a widespread um, perception or approach. And so um, on the very first slide, um, I don't know if, if anyone, I forgot to point out, uh, kind of coming in beginning of the school year and, and 
um, stole the quote from full disclosure from the, the 1994 or 95 Orlando Magic, um, why not us, why not now? And, and, and kind of started trying to communicate to our student body and communicate to, um, to our adults and our, our, even our school staff members and our, our other school leaders well, it, it may have been this way, there may have been this, this character um, issue for years and decades and generations, but why not us, why not now? Like, why not be the ones to do something about it? And so uh, I've listed a number of interventions here, um, but I, I kind of want to zoom in on three, three purposes that the intervention served and shaping character formation of students and, and our greater community. That was kind of the big challenge and, and it was touched on in the, the first presentation was it's not just about changing and forming character in your students, it's about generational, generational feelings and generational moral beliefs um, that, that you're working to, to mold and, and try to reshape. And so it kind of, um, into three primary, all of there's 10 interventions um, between the, the, all the stuff that we have, have put in place this year, but you'll see they all kind of fall into communication of what, the, what should the new character or what, what is the new identity that we want to take on look like. Uh, so that's the first one, the communication. And the second piece was collaboration and input from, um, from people in, within the school, whether it was students, or whether it was staff members or whether it was community members. Um, and then the third one was that opportunity for engagement and involvement um, to internalize and take ownership. And so um, a lot of stuff, of course, was with students. We had student assemblies where we communicated beliefs, talked about what does why not us, why not now mean. Um, you see RAMS up there, which was um, kind of a foundation that was in place when we got there that uh, the, the school mascot is the Rams, and so it was uh, respectable, respectful, accountable, motivated, safe. That if every student strives to be respectful, if every student strives to be accountable, motivated, and safe, that our school and our community would, would thrive. Um, and so we kind of make Rams, but, but Rams that existed, Rams was in place, but, but it, was, it was just something that people said, or it was like people knew what the letters meant. So trying to take that and internalize it um, and then the next set of, of initiatives was really about community involvement. Um, we, we went out, and this was probably the most painful piece of it, um, going to some different town halls and hearing from our community members um, right where they were coming from. And we purposely went to different locations of different people who were hurting or who had been struggling in different ways. And, um, and some of the feedback that, that came to us was, was hard to take um, and, and was um, sometimes interesting. And, and at one of the town halls, we thought that two community members were going to, to get into a fight right there in the town hall in the community center. Luckily, it, it ended with just kind of verbal altercation and one of them leaving the meeting. But there was, there was some real animosity and real tension. Um, but then taking that feedback and turning it into a couple community groups focused on um, growing that character, growing that, um, that new culture. You know, it's one thing to state that these things aren't okay, it's not acceptable to post on social media a racist hunting license, but it's a whole other thing that if you, if you just, if you pull out that, that negative um, moral identity or belief, what do you replace it with? And so um, kind of our last couple things were about students owning with the idea that you know you have some capacity to work with adults and, and involve adults but the real meat of it and the, the real youth who are still impressionable and still able to be impacted and changed is to work with the current students that we have in our in our building in our walls and so we um uh, some of it i'll be honest kind of just fell into fell into um into our laps by nature of um of kids who were hungry and wanted to, to, to see a change and wanted to be in a building where there weren't um, dozens of fights be based on, on kids being um, intolerant of each other and where there wasn't um, just this negativity and this acceptance of, of a, a, a not the best way to live. Um, and so some kids came to me one day and they said, we'd like to have a student leadership group that maybe met 
and, um, and talked about how to improve the school and, and ways that what we want the school and the school culture to look like and what, what we believe is, I mean, they didn't use the words character or moral development, but it's what they were, it's what they were asking and, and begging to be a part of. And so we, I said, well, sure, that's, that's easy to do. And, and every Wednesday morning they started meeting early in the school year and, and providing feedback to, to the school about what they were seeing in their classrooms and, and then getting guidance from kind of the, the school faculty about how they could affect change. Um, we also started just some small group student mentoring and student one-to-one -one initiatives um, with the idea of pulling more and more kids into, into the fold together so that it wasn't such a lonely place to want to make a change or to want to, want to grow. Um, and then the final one, and this is actually hopefully going to pull together a lot of the other things we've been doing with our students, um, is we um, had reached out to and are working with the, um, the Department of Justice to bring in their, their Community Relations Spirit Program, um, which stands for, you see it there, Student Problem Identification and Resolution of Issues Together. Um, and so those, those were kind of, I know that's like the smorgasbord of, of different um, attempts or interventions, but they all fit together and they all had um, different challenges and all had conditions for success. But you'll see the, the same themes, and I'm trying to kind of move quickly here in, in the interest of, uh, of not going over my, my boundaries. But um, the, during the school interventions, the first kind of obstacles we came across was one, that valuable class time. And I know that was a question that came up about like the student. Um, the student meetings and the first, um, like, what about the curriculum of the academic content and the volume of the, the, the time as a valuable resource? And that was for sure an obstacle along with um, kids kind of looking at it first, like, oh, this is dumb. Why are we doing this? Like, you pulled me out of class to do this. Like, this is never going to change. Um, that's, that apathy was, was pretty strong in the early going. And so for it to be successful we found we needed to really be authentic you know you can't have a prepackaged kind of fake character development it, there is no universal like well let me pull this from this website because it worked i mean we don't get me wrong we pulled stuff from websites we we looked at what other schools were doing but you have to make sure we had to make sure it was authentic to our kids and where they were coming from um, and making sure that it wasn't just us talking to kids but that then the kids were giving their input and, and giving their involvement. Um, as far as the community involvement, biggest obstacle was, I told you, we almost had a fight at our town hall. Um, that was pretty, pretty scary. Um, and then the idea that one parent or one individual would just stand up and speak and voice their opinion and dominate the entire session um, because, the, and the divides were so great that two different community members were from completely different perspectives. Um, and so um, kind of what we had to make sure we did was, was to slowly but methodically move towards um, involving stakeholders from all different perspectives, finding stakeholders who wanted to talk about the solutions as opposed to wanting to just dwell on, on the conditions that had led us to, um, to where we were. And so, um, the last one there as far as the student involvement, not just student voice, but true student ownership um, and legitimization so that it wasn't just like, here, let's have you like write down some notes and then give them to us. And then we just decide what we were going to do anyway as a school. Um, we had to make sure that kids understood why they were being selected, whether it was for the mentoring or the one to one group or, or what have you. Um, and make sure that it mattered for the students, make sure that they were involved and that they were connected. Um, and so kind of how do we know it's working? That's always the, the key cog in this, right? Like, how do you know I'm just not up here harping on something we've done in our school that, that doesn't actually work? Or are, how do we know that there's, there's change happening? Um, and in the best way I can tell you is, is the, the response from our kids. Um, remember being at their homecoming dance and um, unprompted, the kid, you know, all the kids at the very end, they're standing in their circle, and um, the like the, for the last dance, and they all start chanting, "Why not us? Why not now?" Um, and I'd be the first to admit that even some of the kids in that circle chanting were some kids that we recently had to address about um, making comments and, and being rude 
to one of our custodians who has Down syndrome. So obviously like them chanting that doesn't mean that they completely get it, but it means that they, they're starting to buy into it, starting to believe. I've gotten handwritten notes from some kids, um, kids' statements in assemblies, um, emails from kids um, that shows that they really are, um, they really are serious about this. And so that, that leaves me of ending um, character success. Kids' ability to say no. My favorite assembly we've had so far was in December, and it was just after we'd had like all the stuff with the hunting license, kind of everybody was high on high tension, high alert, and said, well, we've got a student assembly coming up. So the morning of the assembly, I don't know if you guys know the song, Where's the Love by the Black Eyed Peas. Um, I just had it in my head, and so the morning of the assembly before school, I came in early and printed off like a couple hundred just question marks on a piece of paper, pasted on, I, I gave them to our other, our ninth and 10th grade principal and our dean of students, and I said, I need you guys, just paste them everywhere, cover the whole first floor with question marks. And, it, and I said, if kids ask you what it's about, tell them, don't worry about it, uh, just, just keep on walking. And then, the, of course, if you've seen their music video, that's, they go all through the cities across the U.S. and paste question marks, kind of saying, you know, where's the love? Like, if, if we've got to see the value in humanity. And, and it, that just, it, it was like things came together in that moment. And since we came back from Christmas break, I, I won't lie to you and say that we've been this perfect, inclusive community where, where everyone's in harmony, but we are, we're on the road. Um, and, and in February, we had another assembly where kids were challenged um, to send an email um, that stated what they would do to, um, to step up and take a stand for what, what um, we were trying to do. And um, we, we received something like 200 student resp email responses. And some of them you know, were one line or very short, but that meant that 200 different kids took the time to get onto their email and email someone, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and finally, um, the freedom and the responsibility to make their own choices and take their own ownership um, through the, the community action group, through the, um, the student groups and the spirit program, and just through the actual living out of the RAMS program. So I, I um, that is kind of, the story of Highlands this year and, and what, what we've faced and what we're trying to work towards. And, and I thank you guys so much for your time. So.